Hey, this is me building a $3 million a year business in public. And the way these videos always go is I start them with some YouTube comment Q&A. And that's just to deliver you guys some value right off the bat, help you with the AI and agency business models. Then I do some growth stats across YouTube, Instagram, and my products. And then finally, I do some building in public. Now, today's going to be a quick day. This is my main channel at 156.7K subs. This is my daily updates channel. All I do is I'm just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, just answer rapid fire 10 or 15 minutes of questions. And then finally, I'll probably wrap it up just because I have a lot going on today. Still, we're going to make sure we can deliver a ton of value, just like Umesh is asking how to deliver automations to clients. So really simple and easy process, uh, Umesh, all you need to do to start to deliver an automation to a client is number one, you start from the beginning, you do a kickoff call with the client where when they pay you money and money changes hands, you invite them to a brief chat for about 30 to 45 minutes, where you help them sign up to any platforms that they may not have. Do you do things like give them your affiliate or partner codes to either give them a discount or put some more money back in your pocket? And then you say, I'm going to build everything in your environment, which means if at any point in time you don't want to work with me or something happens, you're going to have everything you need to keep those, keep your systems operating um, on, on your end without me. I don't like holding people hostage. That's not my goal here. We're just going to build it all on your platform. And then I'm going to make sure to document everything for you. Okay, so kickoff call where you set all these accounts up, then you build on their tools. What I mean by this is they give you their username, password, logins, whatever to whatever platforms or tools, NNN, make.com, Zapier, Power Automate, who knows. And then you just do the building on their tools. And then when you deliver, you do so with a video and an SOP using your preferred comms platform. When I say deliver with a video or SOP, I mean, like, you should deliver the project with a recorded video saying, hey, what's going on, client name? Just wanted to record a quick video here delivering the project. And then also, I want this video to act as documentation so that if at any point in time, you know, there's some issue that comes up, you have everything that you need in order to maintain it. I can obviously, of course, maintain the system for you. And that's part of what I'm about to sell you on. Um, but I uh, wanted to make sure you had everything in your hands to work with or without me. Here's how it works. Then you just walk them through that whole process. And then, you know, as I allude to here, then you use this as a retention mechanism. And then what you do is you actually try and you upsell them on a related project based off of the knowledge that you gained over the course of the current project. So you say, you know, okay, you know, uh, here's, here's the documentation. Here's how everything works, blah, blah, blah. At the end, by the way, I noticed while you were doing X, Y, and Z thing that you guys have a current structure set up. I think it's costing you a lot of money. I think realistically, I could probably save you between five to $10,000 a month with a simple system that does this. Don't really know if you were looking for anything like this. I don't want to overstep my bounds, but I thought I'd put it in front of you and just see what you had to, th to say. If you're interested in how I might be able to solve this for you, just let me know. We can jump on a quick call and we can work it out. This is now the loop that just gets you in here and prints money. And you know what you can do is you could pitch them a monthly upsell or you could do uh, just another one-time project. Hopefully that helps. Nicolop says, great content, Nick. How many leads per day can I generate on average by having 15 domains and three sending accounts per domain, which is 45 sending accounts, aka total daily mail volume of, I think, 1,350. So the math is three mailboxes per domain, right? So if it's three mailboxes per domain, if you have 15 domains, then you just multiply that out by three and you get 45 mailboxes. This is what we know. What we don't know is that it's 30 approximately emails per day per mailbox, which means 45 mailboxes times 30 emails a day means 1,350 emails a day total. Now we get into the really interesting part. If you send 1,350 emails a day and you have a two-step sequence, what you're doing is you're sending to 1,350 divided by two new leads per day. Why? Because this volume is going to be distributed across step one and then step two. Meaning of the total 1,350, the first day, you're going to send 1,350 from the first. The next day, you're going to send 675 from the first and 675 from the second. And then you're just going to repeat that over and over and over again until the last day you send 1,350. Okay? So that's 675 new leads. 
So if you're sending 675 new leads a day, two new leads, I should say, you're not getting this many new leads, but whatever, new prospects or whatever, um, how much can you expect in the way of booked meetings? Well, hypothetically, let's use some conservative estimates here. Let's say you have a two, well, I mean, I'm running a campaign right now that doesn't even have a 2% reply rate, does it? Uh, let me just use instantly, one sec. And just give me uno secundo to just double check that I'm not going to be revealing anything here. I'm not going to be revealing anything here. Wow, do I have a ton? Oh, sorry. Do I have a ton of um, emails now? Jesus, 67? That's bonkers. Anyway, uh, yeah, my campaign is like 1.3, 1.5, 1.1 here. So the important thing to note is the uh, the positive reply rate. So in my case, um, 19 divided by 52 is 0.3 uh, times 1.5. My positive reply rate on this campaign is about 0.6%. So that that's, that's the important thing to do. So let's be conservative. And let's say you get an even crappier positive reply rate. Let's say you have a zero point three percent positive reply rate zero point three percent is equal to zero point zero zero three times six hundred and seventy five how many positive responses are you actually gonna get a day you're gonna get two with two positive replies a day uh positive replies a day you might realistically book, I don't know, uh, half of these. It really depends on how quickly you get back to them. So let's say one booking per day. Let's now say that's 0 0.7 shows a day on average. Let's say you run this for 20 days a month. Let's now say you get 14 show meetings per month. Let's say from here, you close one and seven which is obviously 14 out of seven, which is equal to two. And let's say you make, uh, I don't know, some low ticket amount to start, $1,500 or something like that. Now you're making 3K in revenue. Not tons, but as you double your positive reply, you're going to double that, right? Fearless says, man, your stuff is by far the most valuable. I've been a mechanic my entire life. Don't know jack about codes, API, webhooks, etc. Well, guess what? I don't know jack about jacks. <laughs> I'm already watching the Make Money with Make course to get at least a base amount of knowledge and a tad of practice. I guess my question is, if I'm in the learning process of this, I just want to do something small or simple for automating mundane tasks. How can automating something from a barber that uses Booksy, Stripe, etc. that already has certain things built in? If you were just starting out and knew nothing, when you set up cold outreach, what kind of business would you go after and what would you build? Or would you just, should I just try and find little one-off jobs as a freelancer that would be good project uh, practice? Sorry for the long post. Appreciate the response. I would start with the freelancer stuff. Like if you have zero exposure to anything, automation, code, webhooks, JSON, that's going to be the easiest thing to demonstrate. That's going to be the easiest thing to emulate expertise with because these people have a problem that they need solving. And so they're typically a lot more desperate to have that problem solved. If you just try pitching things totally cold, I don't know. I think it'll be more difficult for you. So that's probably what I would do. Pot says, why didn't you verify the emails? I think the biggest issue is you're not verifying the emails. That's why you have such a low open rate. I also commented on your previous video, but blah, 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 um, because I think my copywriting is bad. <laughs> well, I mean, why, why didn't I verify? Because, I mean, I'm getting like, I don't know, an 8% bounce rate or something. But the 8% bounce rate, like, that's I'm still sending to like 92% of the rest of my leads. And I usually just don't verify the first shot, to be honest. Um, yeah, I just don't really verify the first shot. This campaign's trash, actually. This one has like a crazy high bounce rate, so I should probably pause these. Um, but yeah, like, why am I not verifying? Because I just, I, I don't really worry about verifying on the first go. Like everybody and their mom is like, oh my God, if you don't verify, it's not going to work. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I've sent more cold emails than you. So no, I think I'm okay. <laughs> the reality is it is a gradient. It is a sliding scale. It is not your campaign's going to suck if you don't verify and your campaign's going to be awesome if you verify. A lot of people verify the hell out of their campaigns and then they suck like you're alluding to here with your poor copywriting, right? It's a trade-off between the two. If you have better copywriting, you're going to have fewer people mark you as spam. If you have fewer people mark you as spam, then you can get away with a higher bounce rate. It's just a big equation. So I'm confident enough usually in my copywriting that I'm, I'm fine to run like one quick campaign to validate a market. And then if I get results, then I double down on and then I pay the verification fees. But yeah, Okay. Hey, Nick, really love your video content. I uh, well, just want to ask, how do you make those Instagram reels? I mean, it's obvious your voiceover and vid below it is AI generated, but the vid above, is that AI generated too? Uh, if yes, then which tool do you use and how do you market research know what to post? And how do you write your scripts as well? Well, fellow Nick, um, you'd be wrong. I don't AI generate these. I record them myself. So, um, you know, I would, I would encourage you to maybe, yeah, like um, have a higher bar for skepticism there. 
Uh, let me, hopefully this doesn't play. Okay, this doesn't play. So you're thinking I'm AI generating this video. I'm not AI generating this video. It's just, it's just me. It doesn't really make sense to AI generate these. Why? Because the time savings are so minimal. I don't spend very long recording these videos. I probably spent less than 45 seconds recording this. So is that really the bottleneck, the AI generation of the recording? No. So if I'm like 1% higher conversion rate because it's me, and it, it's much it's much more than 1% higher conversion rate because it's me, I might as well spend a few minutes a day you know, doing that, right? So that's how I think about it. Um, how do we do everything else? Well, the market research, a lot of the time we're uh, duplicating, not duplicating, but we're being heavily inspired by videos done on similar tools done from domain specific experts, not necessarily AI channels. We're also subscribed to like newsletters and stuff with all of these drops. Oscar says you added lots of leads to the campaign from different countries. Do you care at all that they're not in the same time zone? Would you not split the European countries into a different campaign just to maximize capability and results? Just asking out of curiosity. I'm in a similar situation now and I'm thinking of splitting them into two campaigns, but I don't know, just wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, you know, in a perfect world, I would uh, I would probably do this, but I'm also just taking a broad assay of the market here. Uh, my total addressable market size for all the campaigns that I'm running over here are, are massive. So all I'm really doing is I'm just like looking to send to a bunch of people and then just quickly verify as, as a first pass, hey, which market treats me the best? And then what I'll do is I'll go much deeper into the market and then I'm gonna do things like split test the copy. So I'm gonna do that over the course of the next few weeks, assuming nobody just completely and utterly destroys my niches in the meantime. Iman says, thanks for the advice that you share. I'm 17, started content repurposing a few months ago, got some clients, but my outreach has hit a wall. Most people already use Opus or similar tools. I'm leaning more towards AI automation because services like copywriting will become obsolete. Automation, obsolete. Automation feels like the real future. Option one, should I fix my content purposing, repurposing outreach? Should I switch from LinkedIn to email, better lead sources and messaging to beat automated tools? Or should I pivot to AI automation, sell templated automations while building custom solutions? Well, my man, you are talking to the AI automation guy. So I am obviously going to recommend that you pick my business model. If I didn't believe that AI automation was the straightest line path for most beginners, I wouldn't be talking about it. I'd be talking about content repurposing instead, right? So just to be clear, um, yeah, AI automation, most definitely. What's the biggest mistake beginners make when selling their first automation to business? Wrong pricing target customers or something else? The biggest mistake that they make is that they just don't get up and running selling at all. They spend all day long thinking that they need to learn these tools to become total proficient experts at them because they're trying to solve every perceivable thing that could go wrong. The reality is you don't know what could go wrong. So you just have to like go into a situation and start having things go wrong. It is only through actually being in the arena and interfacing with the market that you will actually learn how to do the thing that you need. So as opposed to just thinking and learning and being an academic about it, you do have to just like start interacting with customers. That's the biggest issue I see. That's the issue that is bar and above 10 times the size or magnitude of all other issues. I could get, get into the specifics with you, but there are like, let's say there's like a, a million people in our niche right now. There are 50 million that are waiting on the sidelines being like, oh my God, should I start? Should I start? which is good for us, obviously, but you talked about the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem. All right, I'll do one more. Hey, Nick, I'm currently working on building an automatic invoice collection system with the template that you provided. As I'm watching you explain how the system works, I got confused on the email part. What email is the invoice reminder being sent from? If it's being sent from the business email that I'm providing the service from, how do customers know what business the invoice is coming from and how do they trust that it is legit? Also, how am I able to pull my clients overdue invoices? Great question, Kennedy. Thanks for asking that. What email is the invoice reminder being sent from? It is being sent from my own business email, the same email that I do my regular communication with them in. How do customers know what business the invoice is coming from? Usually my email address will have, you know, my domain name directly in it, nick at leftclick.ai. And since it's the email that they were communicating with up until that point in time, they just assume that I am legitimate, which makes sense. How am I able to pull my clients overdue invoices? There are three or four different ways you could pull overdue invoices. The first is you could use something like Stripe. Well, actually, that's a silly way to answer this question. Let me do this. Jump over here. Then let me see if I actually have the automation invoice. Oh, geez, they're all uh, <laughs> they're all paused. That's brutal. Oh, well, whatever. I'm just doing this to flex, by the way. So what am I doing here? I'm using a third party database and a third party, an intermediate database of Google Sheet. But you know what else you could do? You could totally just go Stripe. And then you could list or search all invoices, right? If I search all invoices now, what I can do is I could just return all of my invoices up to the last 100 cent, okay? That's how you do this with Stripe. Let's say you're using QuickBooks or something. They all have similar ideas. Search for invoices, right? If you're using, let's say, Zero or something like that. 
search for invoices. Search for invoices via email even. Oh, that's cool. I guess what I'm trying to say is um, you have the ability to, for any major invoicing tool that you are using, just pull all of the invoices that you've sent up until that point in time, maybe the last 100 invoices. And then you can just do all the logic that I talked about in that invoice tutorial um, yourself. Okay? Okay, and then just because this last question from Ethan is quick, Nick, you talk a lot about finding a niche. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if I want to sell personalized cold outreach, doesn't that mean I can sell to basically any business who needs more leads? Thanks for your content. Yes. I'm just going to remove this extra one here, Ethan. But yeah, you uh, you hit the nail on the head, man. You hit the nail on the head. Okay? Um, And I don't know what has data is. Sorry. This picture looks like it's AI generated, though. So I imagine you're probably trying to market your service to me, Sebastian. And um, I'm just going to remove this because uh, that's not what this is about. I don't know what that platform is. And if I'm wrong, then I'll eat a shoe. But I'm pretty sure you're just trying to use my platform as a way to sell your own service. So kudos to that. I'm just too good for it, baby. So we're going to do some quick brand stats, and then I'm just going to call it there. Um, basically, I'm going to go to brand stats. I'm going to type in blast stop. And what is brand stats? It's an unbroken chain of me monitoring my growth over the course of the last few months. July the 12th today. So I'm going to go over to my main channel here. And I'm just going to log how much growth I've had. It doesn't look like I've grown basically at all. This is because I did this video very late yesterday. Um, so I'm not surprised that I only had 0.25% growth since that very late period of time. I think it's been probably like 12 hours or so. Then this channel over here is probably going to be the same. Yeah, it's only gone up by 48. And then I imagine my Instagram is probably going to be the same because of that. You know, it's not perfect tracking, but um, it's still tracking, right? So I'd rather just be tracking, even if it's not perfect than not. And I take this approach to basically all things. You, you start tracking in the lowest friction method that is available to you, because simply having some sort of data is better than not having any data. It's the difference between zero to one. It gets you 90% of the way there. Like I could theoretically optimize this by tracking at a specific time every single day. I could totally automate this process. But for me, I'm just bringing awareness back to it and then doing this loose tracking every day. It has as much value essentially as not. Okay, hopefully you guys appreciated this video. Uh, that's it for me. I just got a lot going on today. So as opposed to me doing, uh, you know, another 20 or 30 minutes of live building, um, uh, I'm just going to call it here. Uh, I want you guys to know that I sent those two invoices. Uh, so that's good. And I think tomorrow's video, I'm going to include the call. It's unfortunate because I have to do some editing, but I'm going to include the last call that I had with my new method, which is going to be to like blur and obfuscate. We'll see how that goes. And then, yeah, I'm also going to do some like cold email analysis and split testing and stuff for the next week tomorrow. So if you guys want to see what that looks like, definitely tune in. Thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely rest of the day.